Hey folks, it's Shane from Perform TV. Today we're working on our Beetle. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is where my spot on YouTube where I do EV conversions on fun and interesting cars. Now today we're gonna work on our newest uh, project car, which is this 1976 Volkswagen Carmen Cabriolet, originally from Italy, but now living here in the UK. And this is probably the first work that I'm gonna do on the channel on this car. I have done a fair bit on it up till now. Um, I've owned it for a while. And there's a video up above if you wanna get caught up on what's happened there. But basically the plan for this is to um, complete finish off the restoration on this car in parallel with getting all the bits and pieces together to then convert it to uh, electric. So um, it's going to be a bit of just general automotive work on the car, getting it running, uh, you know, testing all the bits and pieces that I've done. Um, and in parallel, we'll be working on, you know, motors, inverters, batteries, and that sort of thing. Uh, ultimately, just to bring the two together. So have a fully running car that's, um, that I know, you know, is capable of doing all the things it needs to and a fully functioning electric drivetrain um, that we can then put into it in as quick a time as possible. So today we're working on the car side of it and we're working on the motor. Um, I had the motor running, but it wasn't running perfectly. Uh, so I've kind of taken bits and pieces of it apart and now it's time to put them back together. So yeah, let's just take a look. So those of you familiar with Volkswagen engines will see that this is incomplete. Um, I was having a bit of an issue with some of the cooling and I basically took a bunch of bits off just to be able to check that everything was okay, there was nothing being blocked or anything like that. And ultimately the issue has come back to a slight problem with the timing. So I need to get that sorted, but in order to do that, I need to get the engine back together. But it's actually a pretty good opportunity here, I think, to take a look at the Volkswagen engine um, that we're going to be working on and also to give it a clean or get the Hoover out. All right, so I think we're ready to put this back together. So we've cleaned up the engine as best we can. Um, I've given, uh, gone down through the, the, the veins with a bit of welding wire twisted around, uh, just to try and make sure they're as clear as possible. Um, cleaned everything up. We've got the tinware here. Uh, we've got some new hardware. We've got new gaskets. We've got new seals somewhere else. So I think we're ready to go. This is the point where you realize in your excitement you've done things in the wrong order. 
Oh well. There's a lot of stuff in here that you don't really see on more modern engines um, and it, it, most of it's related to the fact it's air-cooled. So the way this is designed is it basically splits the engine bay into a cold side and a hot side. So the hot side is basically at the bottom of the engine um, where after the kind of air has been blown past the cooling vanes um, and picked up all the heat from them so that's kind of your hot side and then your cold side is up here where the air is coming in for the first time and you the idea of all this tinware is to keep them and the rubber seals and everything is to keep them totally separate so that you're not pulling warm air in because that will reduce the cooling efficiency but it means there's a lot of little screws to do up Okay, so we're nearly there. Um, so we've got all our tinware security on, um, things like the alternator bolted in, um, all the ancillary bits in place. I've plumbed the fuel line into the fuel pump and on into the carburetor. And now I've just got a few more bits. I need to attach the accelerator cable and wire up the, um, the ignition wiring. And then I'll uh, take you through the engine. So there we have it, our engine's back back together properly. Uh, it's not looking too bad for a 45 year old odd engine. Um, as I said before, this isn't the original engine that was in the car. This one is actually, I think, going by the number, uh, the engine number. I think this is actually from a 77, uh, whereas mine's a 76. But um, yeah, this engine has previously spent time in another car, which was my old one. And uh, now it's in this one. Um, so it's, it's been around the block a few times. Um, nearly at the point where we can start it. Uh, I've got one more job that I need to do and I'll take you through that in a minute. But why don't you come in closer and I'll show you what I've done with the engine so far to get it running properly. All right, so this is our 1200cc Volkswagen engine. Well, 1196cc. Um, flat four, as I mentioned earlier, air cooled, uh, hence all the, the tinware. Um, as you can see, much more simple than modern engines, really easy to work on, great one to kind of try out when you're younger um, and or just new to new to cars and that sort of thing. Uh, obviously, like there's 
only one belt to deal with. Um, the, the timing of the, the valves is done by push rods, which are down underneath the engine. But um, the only thing that's run off the, uh, the belt, so off the camshaft, is the alternator or generator and owner models and the uh, fan, which kind of sucks air in. So basically comes in through these vents into the back of the fan, down over the, um, the b cylinders or barrels, uh, past the cooling vanes, cools them down and then out underneath the car. Simple as that. Um, this one wasn't, it was running when I first got it, but it wasn't running amazingly well. So I've kind of gone through all the different things to try and uh, improve it. So um, one of the first things I did was I replaced the fuel pump. Um, most of the parts that are available for this are relatively cheap these days. So it can sometimes just be much easier to, to get something new rather than try and rebuild something. So I replaced the fuel pump, um, replaced all the fuel, soft fuel lines throughout the car to um, more modern ones the old ones tend to degrade with modern fuel so you don't really want that um, i've cleaned the carburetor so stripped it down uh, a new main jet slightly larger um, so this is what mixes the air and fuel together if you're more familiar with like just fuel injected cars oh, a bee. Um, and basically the jet size decides how much uh, fuel is going in relative to the amount of air but uh, for emissions purposes, these kind of later Beetles tended to be run a little bit on the lean side, um, which is grand for keeping emissions down, but makes it harder to um, to get them timed and tuned properly. So I've done that. Um, we also replaced the distributor because there were the um, the distributors use vacuum from the air going through the carburetor to uh, advance the timing when you're accelerating. So that means that you get the spark a little bit earlier in the cycle, which is good for um, when you need that burst of power, when you've, you've really put the foot down. So uh, the diaphragm on the, my old distributor was toast. Um, it had no, wasn't responding at all to vacuum. Um, and also the distributor was old kind of points ignition so I replaced that with a new one which is electronic ignition um, which just means there's fewer manual things that need to be dealt with and therefore fewer things that go wrong which should in theory make it easier to get the timing right um, and I've also replaced the coil uh, the old one was showing a little bit of weakness so um, got a new one of those as well um, we've replaced things like the belts uh, I've installed a very simple uh, oil temperature sensor which basically causes a, a light on the dash to flash a bit um, if the oil gets too hot which is important because as soon as these things start to overheat um, within a mile or two it can come terminal so we need to kind of keep an eye on that uh, new air hoses all around and yeah that's kind of it it's um, pretty much ready to run um, I've also double checked all the wiring so that's all good so when I got the engine running on this and finally got it running well, uh, the first thing I did, of course, was take the car out for a spin. Uh, it's all registered, insured, taxed, all that sort of thing. Um, so it can go on the road whenever I want to, but had been off the road while I was getting a few things sorted. So I took it for a spin um, and th there was a lot of, a lot of banging coming from the back of the car as I went over bumps and that sort of thing, more than you'd expect. And it's an old car, so it does bang and rattle a bit, but there was more than I was expecting. Um, so got it back home after going for my little spin. Noticed that my timing was off um, because it had gotten very hot. It wasn't quite at the point where the, the um, oil sensor would have told me, but it wasn't far off. Um, hence the reason why I kind of stripped it back just to be able to check that all the, the cooling parts were uh, in place and working the way they should um, but yeah what I found with the the reason for the clunking was that the bolts that actually hold the engine and gearbox into the car weren't really in place um, or they weren't the right, right ones and they had no threads on them so they were just kind of a friction fit rather than a threaded fit uh, so I need to get those 
replaced. But I'll show you what I mean. All right, so here we are under the car. Um, that's an exhaust pipe or one of the exhausts. Um, so where is the problem? So similar to the Porsche, there's only a handful of kind of mounting points that the car has to um, to kind of hold the engine and gearbox into the into the thing and actually those most of those mounting points are on the gearbox point and then the gear the engine is bolted to the gearbox so we've got a mount up front which is covered in stuff that I need to clear off um, but that one's solid and is securely in place and then as we come further back we've got these frame horns that extend out from the frame of the car and then the um, gearbox bolts to this kind of cross member here which then bolts into the frame horns at this point. These are not the right bolts. Um, there's one on either side, either side and as you can see they're actually sticking out a bit. So what I need to do is jack this all up slightly, uh, take the tension off these and then I'll be able to pull them out um, and then I can look and see what I can do to try and um, chase the threads in here and get the new bolts that I have in place. So this is the bolt that's supposed to be in place in the car uh, for mounting the, that rear gearbox mount. Uh, and this is what's actually been in there. So the threads along here are totally toast. Um, basically they were just being held in by rust, which is crazy. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, need to see if we can get this in. Now, the reason why this will have gone so weird uh, and gotten um, threaded is because this the thread pitch here is a really weird one. Uh, the only place you really see it is in um, O2 sensors on BMWs. So I've got a chaser for that. It's a little bit on the short side, but I'm going to see how far in we can get it and um, try and do something to the threads. If nothing else, I'm getting good leg work out of, the, out of this. It's the only way I can get enough leverage on those bolts. In order to get this done, uh, that BMW oxygen sensor thread chaser had to be modified, so I created this kind of Frankenbolt to, to get through it. I ended up having to recut some of the channels, grind off some of the um, threads where they'd just taken too much of a beating in trying to, to do the first one of these. So that is, yeah, it's been ground down so it can go that little bit further into the, into the recess. Um, and then for the bolt themselves, actually, because I couldn't get this going the whole way through, I've had to cut some kind of relief into these so they can kind of self-chase the last few millimeters. Um, the actual hold on the, the thread is, is from about here backwards. So, you know, th this peaks out the far side anyway, so that should be fine. Um, got one side in, just have to get this one in as well, and then we are good to go. So sometimes when you're working on a car, um, there are big milestones. There's getting the engine running, there's getting to drive around the car, and those great feeling when you achieve those. Sometimes there are little jobs that give you nearly as much satisfaction, and this has been one of them. It's been a total, total pain, but it's finally done. So we now have the engine and gearbox mounted securely to the car. Um, these are not going anywhere. It's a vast, vast improvement from the way it was. I'm a little bit freaked out that I went for a drive with uh, nothing basically attached here. So anyway, we're back in a good place. We've got the two um, bolts in and the car can, yeah, should be able to go out on the road now. Um, obviously I need to get the engine running again, but 
uh, apart from that we're good. Also had the advantage of locating some missing crispy wires. Um, these need a little bit of work to them before I can do anything. I think this is probably the missing uh, reverse light cable. Um, so I'll splice in a new bit of new bit of cable for that and then we'll be good to go. All right. So we've got the engine securely mounted in place. We've got it put back together. Um, I've actually primed it a couple of times just by turning the turning it over, try and get the um, fuel pumping back into the carburetor, uh, fill up the float and everything again. So we are now at the point where we are ready to try and start the car. Um, got another camera looking at the engine in the back. So let's uh, give it a go. There we go, she's alive. Um, glad I managed to get it turning over again and it does, it seems relatively healthy. It sounds like there are a few things that I need to sort on it. I just wanna double check the timing because there is a bit of a misfire. Um, I also just wanna check the clearance on the, um, on the tappets and that sort of thing just cause I can hear them. I think they're probably fine, but I just wanna make sure that the, the clearance there is right. And, um, probably just need to reset the idle on the carburetor as well so it, it's fiddly doing that but it's not it's not too difficult it's just a question about working through the steps and I'll, I'll probably do another video on that um, but yeah no this is good it's the engine is securely mounted in the car it runs um, and yeah I could in theory take it out on the road though I don't think I want to do that to the to the engine right now so I'll get it work, running perfectly first and then then get it out and about um, but yeah, it's good, good, uh, good point to hit. So yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if this is the sort of thing you want to see and the ongoing evolution of this then becoming electric, please consider subscribing. Um, comments are always appreciated, as are likes. But yeah, uh, till next time, thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon.